Okay, very good morning to everyone and welcome back. It is Monday 29th of March and I'm joined by Eddie to talk about one of the main headlines in the equity space um, this morning and that is about Archicos, the family fund and the impact that that's had subsequently on Nomura and Credit Suisse in overnight and European trade so far. So Eddie, how's it going and, and get us up to speed. Yeah, good. Been very busy, but always good to be back chatting with you. But yeah, let's let's get straight into it. So essentially what's happened is another hedge fund blow up. Um, so a heavily leveraged long short family office, They're basically a hedge fund. This is uh, Archegos. I think uh, we had a joke earlier, us saying it, you know, that's going to cause some problems. I think uh, Credit Suisse and Nomura have more problems trying to unwind this trade. But uh, essentially, this firm is headed up by a, you know, quite a famous uh, guy called Bill Huang. Uh, he's an ex Tiger uh, Tiger Capital Management trader, um, and he was at his firm was forced to sell twenty billion of stock uh, this Friday. So they had big positions and names such as Viacom, Discovery, Baidu. Tencent Music that we were just talking about was down 34% last week. Um, so this was this basically started to unravel kind of Tuesday, Wednesday last week, so earlier in the week. Uh, and it's now uh, being reported basically that Goldman and Morgan Stanley were unwinding these big blocks. Um, and then uh, obviously Nomura and Credit Suisse are really kind of struggling to, to unwind these blocks. And then as the positions fell, margin calls came in, and then Archegos, uh, basically, you know, this was a forced liquidation by the prime brokers, uh, Credit Suisse and, uh, and Nomura. So, so what, what's, I mean, I know it's hard to get the exact detail on what happened here, but you know, with hedge funds and, and filings, I know in previous conversations this morning, you were saying that this might not necessarily be the case for that transparency with this specific firm in, in question. Yeah, so this is where it gets a little bit uh, misty, is the fact that basically what's happened is the brokers have become involuntary principals here. Uh, so they own the shares outstanding on these leverage swaps. Uh, and this was to uh, firms like Archegos. So when the client can't meet the margin calls, the brokers take huge losses, essentially. So Nomura now owns these shares. So I'm not totally sure at the moment if it's a you know a filing and a kind of transparency but because there's lots of derivatives going on here it's not immediately clear you know why these why this wasn't seen basically because these were taking you know these were down like 26 percent 27 percent on tuesday and wednesday in terms of the prime brokerage positions uh, but this has just got away from them massively yeah so so would this be something then you know we've got a holiday shortened week you've got month end you've got quarter end there's a lot going on. You've also got all the employment data with non-farm still coming out on Good Friday. So this is another, has this run its courses yet? Or are you looking for more, do you think, to, to information to come out and be potentially impactful today, tomorrow? Exactly. It always depends, right? Of, of course. But, and it's always on a case-by-case -case basis. But of course, if we take, if we zoom out and look at the macro environment, this has always been the case, right? Macro uh, liquidity has just been flooded in. Interest rates are at you know all time lows. This is why we've seen equity markets and uh, you know risk taking. Basically, in the, this is what has been has been encouraged by global central banks and these fiscal policies being um, kind of uh, injected into the market. So risk taking is at all time high and leveraged leverage you know in retail right leverage in hedge funds and institutional clients is basically at all time high. So when these positions start to go against individuals and firms, then this is where it can get really ugly. So um, it does, of course, depend on the kind of positions, right, and the company. So for example, the Chinese internet companies that were involved here uh, can be tricky to sell because there's not much institutional backing. Uh, and this has been reported uh, by Bloomberg. Gross, uh, gross leverage at Goldman uh, Prime was last week was at an all-time high. So what we can take from this is that, you know, everyone's really speculatively long right the markets and we've seen this so uh, momentum's getting hit as we've seen with the tech stocks and arc funds and things like this so you know this could be a systemic issue if things get out of hand um, what we need to watch is how this position obviously unwinds and this is going to have a big impact on the indices and things like that but it's more about uh, gross leverage within the whole system but then it's actually those individual firms that are you know, leverage to the to the eyeballs, basically, um, and position that way, that if 
the, we do see an unwind, then it's definitely firms uh, to look at. But if we look at who's actually getting burnt on this, of course, we mentioned Nomura, Credit Suisse, they're down 10%, 15% respectively. And this is a $2 billion loss, right, for, for each of these firms. So what actually is happening here, prime brokerage, they basically loan cash securities to hedge funds. They process hedge funds trade. So with, with Arkegos, they were basically on the wrong side of this trade. But Credit Suisse, Nomura, if it's a risk management problem, if it's a compliance problem, and they, de- they get dinged on this, and they basically let this position run, this is a kind of incompetence, really, from whoever was involved in the sense of they maybe ignored compliance, we don't know yet, or risk management, but they failed to correctly acknowledge the, the losses that were incurring basically early last week. Um, so someone uh, in the risk management department is going to be in serious trouble. But I think if we can kind of take any anything away from this, it's about leverage, right? And how dangerous it is. And I guess for all the people that tune into this channel and the retail that, you know, leverage can amplify gains, but it can also, you know, amplify losses as well. So unfortunately, stonks don't always go <laughs> up. Um, so if you can take anything from this, it's, you know, maybe reduce your leverage if you are leveraged, Um you know, because things don't always go to plan. Um, so I guess that that would be the warning. But it's also a, a factor of the liquidity in this market. You know, if, they, if they can't unwind this trade, maybe there's, it's a liquidity problem uh, with the specific names or, you know, maybe systemically. Uh, but I think with Bill Huang, you know, he's still, it now is time to look at as how much has he still got to li- liquidate? You know, it, does he have positions to liquidate? Do the banks still have big positions to unwind? So that could have a, uh, a knock-on effect but i think with B- bill huang i think the one thing to to also note is this is not the first time he's been margin called he actually got mar- margin called uh, with volkswagen in the 2008 crisis so he seems like a, a bit of a character um but this is not the the first time he's been he's been uh, hurt uh, with the margin call okay cool well with that we'll wrap it up thank you eddie for your insights and uh yeah we'll we'll catch up again when we have further updates. Perfect. Thanks, Ant. Cheers.